I went to a workshop here on Staten Island and uh, at Pierce 37 and there was a woman who flew in from California with her son and her son was very involved and he really um, didn't look like he was with us in any sense of the word. And when she said, you're going to hear from my son Jeremy now, I was like, really? And he got up and he spelled on a board and then he was typing on the iPad and it was a voice uh, output device. So it said, hi, my name is Jeremy. I'm 21. I have autism and I almost fell off my chair. And uh, she was signing books. I went up, I put the book, signed the book. And then I said, what, you know, where did your son learn to do that? What is that? And she told me and I immediately went home and, you know, made travel arrangements, took me to Texas. And then we came back and I said, I have to share this with the world because I met my son in Texas at 12 years old, if you could imagine that. I, 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 that's when I met him, his personality, his knowledge, how much he was aware of what was going on that we never thought he was aware. Yeah. So um, it was pretty life-changing, something that you want to go scream out from the rooftop. Mm -hmm. But it was a hard sell. It was a hard sell in the beginning. People were like, what? what? Is that even real? Are those his words? Or, you know, I, nobody was ready to embrace it except on your mark. It was a rough start in the sense that I made a big mistake. I came home and wanted everyone to be on the board with him. Family, friends, workers, and I just Very dove excited. in and I totally flopped. It was overwhelming for him. It was overwhelming for everyone that worked with him because I'm like, you have to learn this. You have to do this. I have to train you. You have to do this. And everybody was a little overwhelmed. Okay. So um, Nick kind of shut down. He was like, you know, it was just too much. So I finally took a step back and Suzanne, who's been with us since he's three, um, she was my point person. I picked her to, to go first and she really chugged away. And then there was Vicki and everybody that was on staff learned eventually, but I did it much slower. But I did present it to his school and you know he goes to South Richmond High School and uh, once again I had a great, great staff and man, Jim McEwen, who I will you know, be indebted to forever because he said, okay, if this is how your son is going to communicate, show us how, let's do it. And I brought people in and showed the staff and little by little, Nick was doing it with each staff member. It took a while. This yeah. is not something that was yeah. done over months. It was a couple of years in the making, but the school embraced it and it's just been, you know, phenomenal because They've met Nick and they don't look at autistic kids the same way no. ever again. No. And my famous saying is you can't unsee this. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. You're like, wow, if that kid is doing that, what about all these other kids who you don't think are, you know, with us or thinking and feeling and expressing and it's nothing could be farther from the truth. These are Nick's words. In 2010, I went to Texas and I met a woman named Soma who had changed my life forever. I am Nick. I am 21 and I am non-speaking autism. There were many times in my life where I worried I would never be able to speak. Then I learned the rapid prompting method and my whole world changed. Soma opened my world and gave me the key to unlock every challenging door I was facing. I learned to communicate. This was the most freeing obstacle in my life. Since that time, I've been practicing spelling to communicate as well as teaching my body to cooperate with my mind. This has been a difficult struggle. As my spelling skills were improving, my communication grew. I now had a voice and a way to reach the world. My mom always believed in me and I'm so glad she has always found opportunities to help me. He, you know, he uses it every day at home and out in the community and people, he's like, a celebrity. People always see him out and they're so curious, what is he doing? You know, people in restaurants, staff, because now he'll give his own order and he'll even go and medium rare is how I want my steak cooked. It's like pretty funny. And people are just like, you know, what just happened? Uh, right. And they're just... You want to meet him in there, but... Yeah, they're just shocked. In awe. Because, yeah. You don't Maybe you need music. Yeah. For real. Yeah. I agree I feel with like him. Like we're in Why? I need some music. My thing <laughs> doesn't work. Do do? Lou, do we got Pump music up in the here? Jam in here. Yeah. <laughs> Nick's 
says that helps his attention, the music. He says, you know me all too well. He tells you his innermost thoughts, and some of them are heartbreaking. He wants to get married, he wants to drive, he wants to live on his own, and, you know, I'm here to make as many of those dreams Happen. as possible, but I don't know that everyone would be possible. Yeah, but, that's right. um, we're trying our best to make Absolutely. them happen. And he's really um, a funny kid. He's got a sense of humor that you can't even imagine the things he says. He's even used some colorful language on the board, but he's, <laughs> he's as typical as a 21-year-old guy would be, you know? Mm -hmm. He once told my husband he wants to go look at um, hot girls in the car. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> my husband's like, I'll do that. Right, right. That's you. <laughs> right. I saw Probably that. that one. Yeah, roll this way. Feet. Yeah. Right. Got it now. Remember? Right. You ready? Mm -hmm. Two twins. Oh, 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 Okay. a breakthrough person and um, from there you went to the school yeah yeah and then everything just started unfolding the right way not all at once right and you know there were some non-believers at school and you know staff of course. Um, you know related services were like what and then we once we got them on board Nick told them right off the bat you don't believe I'm not gonna talk to you and they were just like whoa so yeah he's really been a great self-advocate for himself mm -hmm. It's taken time for me to learn because I was mom and I was in charge of a lot of things and I had to really heed his words and he used to say to me, mom, don't control so much. Let me make my own decisions. I want to pick my clothes. I want to buy my clothes. I want to decide what I eat, when I right. eat, where I go. And I was like, oh my goodness, it was hard for me to really let go let of go. all of that. But I'm telling you, you know, he's in there and I just let him do what he needs to do and he's mm -hmm. just flourishing from it. Yeah. And um, he's showing others. So yeah. it's really, yeah. really been um, important work. It doesn't, you know, it may not seem like giving him the choices to make his own decisions, what he eats, what he wears, but it's made him so happy. Everyone. And it's so important to let them do those things on their own and teach them to do the right. things on their own. Because all you're teaching them by doing it is that you do it better. <laughs> but they it's need true. to know it's true. that they could do it. And ha you have to presume confidence and let them know you believe in them. And believe me, their whole world changes. And so will so yours, you know. Go ahead, give it to them. We got a pizza, we got a pizza. Is that an oven? Where's the oven? Pizza coming in? That one? Pizza? Okay, go this way, this way, this way, this way. Okay. So it's been a really like, you know, eye opening process. Absolutely. To watch Nick Absolutely. Become Nick. Mm hmm. You know? You really did meet him at, in Texas. I certainly Crazy. did. And I'm Crazy. so glad I did because he's just an amazing soul. Yeah, everybody who meets him is touched. Mm -hmm. And I don't just say that because he's my son and, you know, but it's so true. And uh, I, I used to be where we'd walk and, you know, people would not know us or not, you know, into in, inter interact with us or not say, now it's like, is that Nick? Or, hey, Nick, and the high fives, and I'm just like, wow, you know, he's really out there.
you want anything from the deli? Rice? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah, it's children are set free because I feel like um, they're all in there. It's just a matter of working a little harder to find out who they are and get them out. Mm -hmm. So I hope it grows and um, I'm really proud that we started it. Yeah, you should be. You really should be. Thank you. Spelling to Communicate is really going to make its mark. Uh, we want to save the world. Like I want to yeah. go to every kid and say, let's do this, but it's not enough of us. What I want everyone to know is that having autism is a minute by minute challenge. People don't recognize that my body is a total disorganized mess. My impulsive movements, stims, and complete lack of control at times are exhausting. There are times though that I feel my autism is a gift. I know that may sound strange, but I see it as a way to advocate for myself and others, like me. Ever since I have learned to communicate, I have found a profound purpose for my life, and that is finding ways to tell my story and spread awareness about autism. I hope that after meeting me and seeing what I am capable of, no one will ever look at autism the same way again. And I tell Nick all the time, Mark Twain said, there's two of the most important moments in your life is the day you're born and the day you find out why. Uh -huh. And I tell Nick, we found our why. Okay. We know. <laughs> yeah, you did. So that to me is just you know, been a gift. It's just an incredible feeling. And the best part about it is that I always wanted Nick to feel like he had a purpose in his life, mm -hmm. that his autism didn't just exist. And, you know, poor Nick, and he had to grow up with autism. I always told him there was a, a better, bigger reason for him. And this was it. Mm -hmm. It all makes sense now. I tell Nick, you're the teacher. You are showing, you're, you're like paving the way and you're like the pioneer of this and that your life is so significant mm. with God that he put you here for that reason and he gets a big smile and his chest comes out and he's just so happy. Mm -hmm. So I, I just feel like we're in such a great place now. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it means a lot to us. Right. I, 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 I'm going to cry.